Hi everyone, welcome to another 6-5 podcast. On the road here at the Lattice Semiconductor Analyst and Investor Day 2023 here in New York City. I'm Daniel Newman, host today. I'm joined here today by Isam, Sherry, and Jim. Hey, welcome to the show. It's great to see you all. It's Thanks, to be here. great to Thank be here, you. Daniel. I feel like I've had a few of you on the show before. I think you might have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last year at the uh, Computer Museum, a yep. couple of you. Yeah, Sherry, that's right. I think that's first right. time. I think it's the first time, yeah. yeah. Thanks. You had a really good day today here at the Analyst Investor Day, by the way. One of the best presentations she I've seen well. from the CFO. Thank you. Um, Thank you. We'll talk more about that here. So I want to talk to all of you, and I'm glad to have you here with me because, you know, each of you came on stage today and talked to God, there had been about 100 um, equities uh, here analysts in here in yeah. the room, yep. not to mention a remote group. Yep. And there was great questions coming in, which is always indicative. And, you know, my Twitter stream, which is always pretty indicative of how I feel, was, was pretty warm. And, and I'll be candid, you know, I don't give out free positivity, but <laughs> when you get on stage and you talk about expanding revenue, you get on stage, you talk about lowering op X, which during this time of austerity, I'll call it in the market, is always very strong. And then increasing op inc, generating more cash. Sorry, not stealing your thunder. I'm going to give you a chance to talk about that. <laughs> when you talk about all that, you make it very easy to feel positive. Jim, over the last uh, several years since you started, you've seen the company double in size. Um, revenue, very impressive. And of course, you've seen the share price grow exponentially. A lot of very positive things for the company. I guess start out, just kind of talk a little bit about the day today. Talk a little bit about what you were focused on here at the Analyst and Investor Day. Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, we're really happy to be back here. Um, the last time we did an investor event in person was four years ago, so we're happy to be back in person at NASDAQ. But, you know, our message was, uh, number one, that when we look at the company, we are absolutely positioned in the right end markets. Um, the markets that we have now over 90% of our revenue in are the right end markets for Lattice to be in. And that's industrial, automation robotics, automotive electronics, uh, communications, and computing. So we've completely repositioned the company in the right markets. And then what we're really excited about is we're in the middle of the biggest product portfolio expansion in history. And so that's driving some really great financial results. If you see, if you look at just over the last, say, two years, top line revenue has accelerated. We grew revenue by, what was it, 26% yep, in 2021, 28% last year. We've grown gross margin to now about 70%, operating income approaching 40%. So a lot of really good financial progress. And I think that kind of demonstrates you know, us being in the right markets and bringing great products to our customers. Yeah, you make a great point, Jim. I've said publicly a number of times that your diversification and the fact that yeah. your exposure to consumer has been somewhat limited has really been a tailwind for you'd have such strong results over the past few quarters. I mean, the semiconductor at large, industry at large, has not had a great 2023 or even back half of 2022. Yeah. But each quarter, I get the call and say, hey, we're going to talk about the numbers. It's like record revenue, <laughs> profit, exp and you know, it's almost like, okay, too good to be true. What am I missing? I think that was kind of some of the sentiment here. Every, you know, a lot of the questions that came in were like, all right, this is really good. Talk a little bit more about how you're going to do it. And Sherry said, that it brings me over to you is, you know, you heard him say, you know, you've, I think you put a target number up near 70% um, gross margin. and going over for 70, yeah, for gross margin. That's uh, quite a feat, expanding in a time, you know, like I said, a challenging market. Of course, you guys are uniquely positioned. You're in those end markets that have been a little bit more resilient, I would say, than some of the consumer parts. But, you know, all that success, what do you attribute that to? How do you keep that going into that, you know, range of getting over 70 and then above? Because everyone's going to want you to keep going. There's no end to that. Yes, and, and we're, we always are trying to uh, beat our targets as well, no doubt. Uh, but uh, the gross margin target that we put out is the low 70s. Um, and, you know, back in, in 2019, when we, we developed our gross margin expansion strategy and laid the foundation there, um, we had three key areas of pricing optimization, product cost, or product mix rather, and co product cost reductions. And so um, we've been executing on that strategy now for going into its fifth, fifth year. And so we have uh, improved our gross margin by 1,360 yeah. basis points in that period of time. So um, this, this whole methodology and, and, and the strategy that we put in place is part of our DNA. It's the way that we run our business. And it's really focused on, in particular, the pricing optimization act aspect is focused on making sure that we get the value for our products. Um, our products with our leadership product portfolio, 
you know, our, our, our software attach um, and the functionality that our products provide, uh, you know, make it a lot easier to sell our products to customers because they want that functionality. It, 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 it's, it's tremendously uh, helpful in differentiating their applications as well. Um, so, you know, we're going to continue to execute on that gross margin ex expansion strategy and, um, you know, it, we've got multiple levers there and uh, really pleased with the progress over this over the past four years. Yeah, you definitely mentioned all the levers that you have and all those end markets. You know, when you showed, I think, Simon was in your part of the presentation, you showed the content opportunity inside of the automobiles. You showed the data center opportunity, yeah. um, the 5G. I mean, think about all the trend lines. And of course, you had this sort of backdrop of AI. I yeah. mean, we can't, yeah. I imagine you're going to have to speak to that at some point. I've never seen a trend come on in such short order. Again, if you've been in the industry a while, we've all been thinking about AI. I mean, I remember you showing me a vision training back at the Avant launch. You yes. were showing me some of the, the vision. And I'm saying, you know, how you know, faster, lower power, what you're accomplishing there. But this generative AI thing has kind of brought a whole new level. And that, of course, is going to mean more compute, more FPGAs, more, more, more. And so you've seen your, your SAM. I, I remember when I think we first started working um, you know, and being briefed by by Lattice, you were around three billion. Was yes, what you were right. showing, <laughs> and then it was six. <laughs> That's and right. it was I think six. you pushed to six with the initial right. uh, advent of the Avant line, and then this at this event you show, you flash ten, right. which is pretty significant. What do you attribute? What are the trend lines? Assam that are driving this growth in SAM? Yeah, I mean, $10 billion, we've got lots of headroom to continue to grow with our products, both small and mid-range FPGAs. Um, there's, there's a lot of things happening in the industry that we're taking advantage of with our customers trying to innovate more. Um, artificial intelligence is one of them. You spoke about that. We just see our customers, whether it be in an industrial market, adding more intelligence to the robots that are being deployed, uh, we see that in the automotive market with ADAS type applications, uh, in cabin monitoring that can leverage artificial intelligence as well. And there's just a lot of edge applications. Uh, you know we're in client devices. You and I had chatted about that before. There are client devices that are being deployed today that are leveraging very small power efficient lattice FPGAs and software to run these artificial intelligence for user applications like presence detection, shoulder surfing. So we see just a growing application around edge uh, AI, which really is exciting for us. By the way, you, 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 fl you flashed a data point, I think something about maybe getting an hour or more yeah, something like that, 60. That's, that's absolutely that, right. But when you think about the world and like all that's going on with climate, net zero, uh, you know, companies, every time you, know, you have a, a thousand employees, 10,000 employees, every time they plug in one more charge, you know, that one more hour is the difference from that person running through one more cycle, one more charge. I mean, that's pretty big. And that's something AI, that's something in FPGA, that's something, people don't talk about that, but what a, what yeah. a really great application at the edge. It is, I mean, we, we've always built a uh, DNA in the company and our mission is to be the low power programmable leader. And it's not just that our FPGAs are low power. We're actually bringing in capabilities for our customers to even drive their systems out of low power. And that's a really good example of how we do that in the client. Yeah, and I like well. that you mentioned that on like the screens and displays and cars enabling, you know, Every car might have a somewhat different setup and display, but they could use programmable to be able to use the same, you know, the same, same device to be able to different. address different configurations. So cars, because they're still, you know, they're going to need variety. Even though I know we're standardizing, and I know like you know with Tesla, every car, but a lot of people want that variety. They still like to design. I know you and I have had car conversations. Yes, we have kind of many. It's our, <laughs> it's our cockpit. It's the car. It's, the thing, it's where you know? we sit. That's, a, that's, that's something we, we, we grew up on cars. You and I we did, had that and conversation. We did, and, and, and I like <laughs> some of the personality you're able to bring out by by being selective and that flexibility in the programmable gives you the opportunity to have differentiation while still being flexible in design, low power, scalable in your in your in your build. Jim, you talked about, you know, the roadmap a little bit. Actually yeah. you and Assam both did. Yeah. You launched some product, you <coughs> talked about future product here. Talk a little bit about that product roadmap and how you're going to continue to roll out products so quickly, because that's going to be part of what's going to make this 10 billion SAM possible. And obviously it's going to be part of what's going to continue to make Lattice Semi <laughs> Uh, very compelling to this analyst and investor community. Yeah, uh, that's a great question, and we are always happy to talk product. Right? We, we love, <laughs> we love the product. I mean, I'm a product guy, um, and most importantly, Lattice is a product company. I mean, we're only as good as our products. But I think the thing that we're really excited about right now, as an entire company is excited about that, is Lattice is going through the biggest product portfolio expansion it's ever done in its entire history. And the company's 40 years old, right? And so over that 40 year history, this is the biggest expansion we've ever done. I mean, we brought, yeah, we announced just today four new products that we're going to bring out 
this year, right? So we're, we're building out the Lattice portfolio at a really rapid rate. And if you ask our customers, hey, what are they excited about? It's the same thing, right? Lattice is bringing out a tremendous number of new products, but we're not just bringing out a lot of new products, right? We're bringing out market leading products, products that are two and a half times better power efficiency than our competition, right? That, that's a big deal to our customers. I mean, if you, if you look at our customer systems, usually the primary design constraint is around power, the total system power budget. So if we're able to go to, to our customer with a, with a solution that's two and a half times better power efficiency, that's a big win for our customers. And we're doing that with higher performance and then the physical device size, a lot of times our devices are six times smaller than our competition. So it's just like incredible amount of differentiation that we're bringing in. So I think if you ask uh, people in the company, what are we excited about? It's definitely the product portfolio, the strength of the product portfolio, the fast rate that we're building that out. And I think our customers would say the same thing. They're equally excited about that. Yeah, and the power challenge is always palpable. It's, oh, it's yeah. a big challenge. And it's not just for the sake of lower power anymore. Like I said earlier, there's a pretty big mandate on, on every yeah, device, certainly. every company yeah. to use less power. And so helping to solve for that is meaningful yeah. and people should care about that. And so one of the things that uh, you talked about, I believe it was, Sam, it was you and it all blurs together. It was, <laughs> you guys went quick, but you, you talked about how your new products are connecting and attaching very well with your existing customer base. Yes. And this is something that's a little different for you was that, you know, historically you sort of had a smaller portfolio, smaller subset of products. You landed Avant very quickly. You know, so with this product roadmap, I'm kind of curious, are your in customer engagements, how are they evolving? How are you able to show that net revenue expansion and attach? Is it is it been has that landing been easy or or what are you seeing there? Yeah, the customer intimacy and um, working relationship has changed dramatically since we started back in 2019. And it goes back to what Jim talked about, which is our product portfolio expansion. When our customers see us investing in products that satisfy their needs, align with their roadmap, um, the customer intimacy just gets stronger. And when it gets stronger, they're actually participating in that definition itself. I mean, you and I talked about this and we talked about this at our Avant launch. We had over 100 plus customers that we engaged with that defined Avant that we launched in December of 2022. So the customer engagement is much stronger than it was before. And with that customer engagement, not only are they helping us define the right products they need, but they're also working us really closely and we're identifying new ways to leverage our flexible, power efficient FPGA architecture. And that's good for the industry. It's good for the customers, it's good for us, and it's good for the industry as well because they take advantage of the, the FPGA, it's flexibility and low power. So the engagements um, have gotten better at every level. It's better at the engineering level, at the system architect level. Even with some of our customers right now, we're engaging with their marketing teams. I mean, we're talking with their marketing teams and what's your challenge? Where do you want to go with these products? So it's very different than it and was you before. You flashed a, a large swath of logos, which was very impressive, all the partners. I also say your software, if I, if I may suggest, has been very sticky. You know, everybody's trying to figure out how to develop on the silicon, how to develop for the yes. programmable environment. And that's been something I know over the last three or four years as I've been following Lattice Semiconductor more closely, has been the speed of development in software, which is enabling companies to get onto the platform, but not only that, but once they're invested, stay yeah. on the yeah. platform. And I think stickiness, especially when you don't have traditional ARR, is really important to that investor community. You know, it helps you push that margin, helps you keep those customers, makes your revenue more predictable. Everybody loves that, everybody wants that. Sherry, a more pragmatic capital allocation question. Mm -hmm. I think in 22, you guys announced a, a fairly robust buyback program, something like 150 million. Talk a little bit about the capital allocation strategy and you know how the buyback uh, program, how you're in, how you're utilizing it, what your plans are there, uh, et cetera. Sure, absolutely. So, um, frankly, with our our strong cash generation uh, and strong balance sheet, we've been able to execute in all aspects of our capital allocation strategy. Um, first and foremost is investing in the organic business, and so you know the the, uh, the investments that we've made in our our product portfolio, as Jim mentioned, have been the represent the most rapid expansion in the company's history, and so we'll continue to make investments in that area. Certainly, investments in demand and creation, customer support, all of that for the long-term growth of our company. Um, we also, in November of 2021, we acquired Mirror Metrics uh, as part of our software solution strategy. Um, and so um, that's been going very well. Uh, and then uh, I talked in our uh, presentation earlier today about the significant uh, pay downs that we've done on our debt yep. uh, and reduced the leverage to, you know, four years ago was about 3X, uh, very high. 
And so um, today it's well below one. So we've made significant progress there uh, on our balance sheet. And then from a return of capital to shareholders, our share repurchase program that you mentioned, the $150 million authorization, since the uh, end of 2020, when we started that program, we have repurchased 3.6 million shares. And so that's reduced our dilution by 2.5%. So very significant. Um, and so when, when you look at our capital allocation strategy, something that we evaluate and execute on every quarter, um, you know, evaluating the best use of our cash, um, but, but we certainly prioritize long-term growth and uh, you know, long-term shareholder value as part of that. Yeah, I noticed a lot of very positive feedback from the investors in the room related to the capital allocation and related to the cash flow mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. way you communicated the company's strategy. Mm -hmm. I think right now, I, I, I keep calling it like a period of austerity. I know there's sort of mixed messages coming from the market, but with the higher interest rates, lowering debt is very yeah. important yeah. with yeah. a lot of sort of what I would call uncertainty. You know, we hear a lot of, especially from peers in the semiconductor space, oh, we expect the back half to be better. We expect, expect, expect. I, I think the thing is, is you're kind of saying, no, we're going to do it right now. Uh, these market conditions are, are rife uh, for growth, and I think that you've, you know, you've been on top of it. Now, the great news is you've been doing it through this period of time that has been, and, and I track all the semi companies. <laughs> this has not been an opportune time for growth. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been a great time to try to remove debt because cash flow and cash has been king. So the fact that you're able to do and mix your strategy and, and stay really forward thinking with it, Sherry is is really good. So, so Jim, I kind of like to wrap it We're up. We're lucky here. to have Sherry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> behind I think that uh, was your point, Daniel, right? <laughs> so, you, we I, agree. If I'd have only said that, it would have been a short show, but it seems it, it seems based on the reaction today, yeah. yes, you sure are, Jim. <laughs> Thank um, you. So let's wrap up with kind of just some yeah. thoughts on what you really want the audience today to walk away hmm. with. What are some of the key messages, maybe the top one or two things, Jim, that you really hope yeah. that the investors and the analysts in the room walked away thinking? Yeah, it's a good question. I, you know, I'm coming up in, on my five year anniversary at Lattice. I can't believe it's already been five <laughs> years. In fact, you, you know, guys will yeah. be five years <laughs> too yeah, yeah. soon. And when I reflect over the last five years, uh, you know, I feel really good about the progress we've made with the company over the last five years, whether that's revenue growth or product line expansion, profitability expansion, et cetera. But I think, I'm certainly speaking for myself, but I think I would speak for you guys too in saying, like if we look forward, we're definitely much more excited about where we're headed from here than the past five years, right? We think we're just sort of scratching the surface, we're just getting started with the company. If you look at, first of all, the great end markets that we're positioned in, we're positioned in exactly the right markets, they have long-term secular growth trends, so we're in the right markets, but more importantly, you know, we're in the biggest product line expansion we've ever done in, in the company's history. That's a, that's a big deal to us, and that's definitely important to our customers. So we're really excited about that, and we're really excited about what that means in terms of the company's financials moving forward. I mean, Sherry, you raised, you raised our revenue target today. We raised our gross margin target. Yep. We raised our operating, operating income, income target. target. So uh, we raised almost every financial target of ours today, and that's because of the strength of the product portfolio build out, the markets that we're in. So we feel great about the future of the company and the ability to continue to just generate outstanding shareholder value for our, for our investors. Jim, Sherry, Assam, thank you so much for joining me here on this 6.5 on the road in New York City at Lattice Semiconductors Analyst and Investor Day. Really appreciate you being with me. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Thanks you very much. Thank you. All right, everybody, you had it here. Thanks for joining the 6.5 on the road. We are here in New York City for now, but I got to go. So hit that subscribe button. Join us for all of our shows. We really appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you later. <laughs>